Welcome to the ongoing Kundalini Awakening series. I'm your host, Brent Spirit, and today we have two very, very special guests, Kate and Gordon. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're excited. We're going to get into some, some really deep, deep stuff talking about uh, their journeys with the Kundalini Awakening process. I'm going to talk about one of the most incredible projects I think I've ever come across especially because, of course, it has to do with my favorite topic, Kundalini Awakening. Uh, before I give them a brief introduction, just let me say, hey, how are you? Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, thank Kate. you. Oh, it's you're so honor. welcome. Yeah, it's so great to be here. We've been excited about this for a while. Yeah, we love what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I'm happy that you're, you're now you're part of it. You're part of what I'm doing here. So Kate, Kate and Gordon, they are the visionaries behind a movement. I, I think it, I think I call it a movement. I like that. It's something that transcends labels. I feel a movement that they've called when lightning strikes. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna steal their thunder. M maybe I could say I'm not gonna steal their lightning by describing the full project. But in brief, when lightning strikes began as a film, a documentary about the Kundalini Awakening journey. Mm -hmm. And so far, I believe they've just got a trailer out. And around that trailer, a massive, dedicated, passionate community has formed of people at all points of the journey uh, to do with Kundalini Awakening. And in that community, there is some incredible teachings, there's some incredible support. And it's something unlike anything that I've ever come across within the spiritual scene you could say mm -hmm. and so i'm really honored to give them an opportunity to share about when lightning strikes the movement itself and of course i think it goes without saying both kate and gordon here are very experienced travelers of the kundalini path and so they've got a wealth of knowledge wealth of experience to draw upon and i'm going to try and get them to share some of that with us today uh, i don't think that's going to be too hard they're very open and so let's just mm -hmm. get right into it Awesome. Uh, I I want to begin chatting with Gordon a little bit. Well, well, we'll all chat together, but in particular, I want I want Gordon to, if you could, please let us know a little bit about your journey. Uh, just to give our our listeners a little bit of context, I, I spoke with Kate and Gordon a few weeks ago for about an hour, and we chatted a little bit about their journeys, and there were some some really interesting things came up, and so I want to tap into some of those themes here because I think they'll be relevant to many of us that are on this path ourselves, mm -hmm. and in particular, Gordon, you mentioned that you didn't really have much of a spiritual inclination or, or interest in kundalini awakening when you start to experience these sorts of things so so take us back to to when this all began who were you back then what was going on with you and and what brings you to where you are today hmm. thank you brent um yeah to summarize it um you know i i i thought i was living sort of a normal life and had a you know relatively uneventful childhood at least that's what i thought um and you know i just was going through the motions of making myself in the world and tried all kinds of different things and then found myself as an executive coach an author and speaker and had a practice for many many years and but never feeling like I was comfortable in my skin and never really feeling like I was doing the right thing and feeling awkward and really feeling like I was sort of a misfit. Like I, I was just going through the motions to fulfill what I thought the world and society, you know, expected of me. And I didn't realize at the time that the degree to which I was putting together this facade and um you know and and in my attempt to get love basically i i pursued all kinds of sort of extreme sports and broke 20 bones and 10 orthopedic surgeries and and everything about my life was kind of 
extreme, you know, like I, people would say, I couldn't do something, you know, you're too young to be a coach or you can't publish a book or you can't, you know, and, and I would like, no, I, I've got to do this. And, and so at, you know, at great cost to myself and, you know, and I had two adopted kids later in life. And so, you know, after, so I was on my way back from, and I can share more about the the backstory before lightning struck, it, whatever you feel you want to ask about. But, um, so I was, I was, um, in DC doing a talk, um, a book talk at a conference and um i was feeling really emotional and teary and i was like what is going on and then after i did my talk i just like had to get out of this big conference center and and i walked along the potomac river and i just felt this presence and this amazing energy and and tears started to flow and i and i i looked and in front of me was a, a statue that was made out of shrapnel from the 9-11 attack on the pentagon and it was a statue of an eagle and i've always liked eagles and i'm like whoa that's really cool and then i looked above me and there were two bald eagles circling directly over my head like you know 100 feet you know what um and 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 so the energy was just building and i didn't know what was going on and the next day um um you know, I'm on the flight home and I'm like reflecting on my life and the fact that I, I really needed to execute a divorce or the marriage of 22 years. And I knew it 10 years in that I, you know, or sooner that I, it was not healthy for me um, at all. And so I'm reflecting on this and I'm reflecting on my kids and I'm just like realizing I've had a really traumatic life and i and that and i'm the plane is packed and i just suddenly spontaneously said god i allow you in and then boom this energy shot right through me and i was released of any possible negative feeling or emotion and I later learned it was referred to as a non-abiding, you know, enlightenment or, or whatever, but it was, it was a non-abiding samadhi state, which typically, from what I understand from many people, especially in our community, you know, they'll have a, a unitive experience for an hour, a day, or a couple of days. Or, but this feeling of pure love, oneness, gnosis, downloading understanding feeling like i was just part of everyone and everything and just marveling at the absolute stunning glory of this existence and this earth and technicolor everything everything it was just everything was so vibrant and so positive and there was no fear whatsoever and i realized how much fear i was actually operating from having had that experience and this state lasted for five months straight and I didn't have to sleep. I didn't need to eat. I was full of energy. My productivity was like superhuman. And suddenly I was able to get more done in you know, four hours that it would take me all week to do. And there was like these superpowers, but the, the, the energy was so intense that the computer would crash and I'd walk by my car and the alarm went off and street lights would flicker when I walked by and, you know, dogs and animals and birds would just fly up to me or, you know, it was just, it was, there was this magnetism people too. And I proceeded to execute the divorce and then suddenly, you know, people are coming to me and I'm like, no, I don't know what it, it was only about a month into it that I finally connected the dots after researching it, you know, intensely that, that this was the Kundalini awakening. I mean, I knew immediately that it was divine and I, and I was talking to God just dialogue regularly, right from the beginning. Um, it's interesting. I'm getting, I'm feeling a lot of energy right now thinking and talking about, this experience so i 
executed the separation, moved out of the house, and I'm still taking care of everybody and everything. And I'm living in my office, happier than I've ever been. I'm on a blow up mattress in my office. I'm like, I don't need anything else. I need nothing. I'm so happy here. Um, and the energy was still transforming my circuits and it was, you know, popping and cracking and, and um, levitating and uh, I mean, some really intense experiences. <laughs> I'm glad I've never seen you levitate yet. <laughs> Pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of other, I haven't seen you. A lot of other crazy things. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, my body changed. I suddenly looked 10 years younger and I lost 20 pounds without doing anything. Well, I wasn't eating that much, but suddenly, and I, and I was just like my eyes, I could just see it. I look in the mirror and I'm like, what is going on? All right. Fast forward five months later. And I thought this is the way it's going to be. You know, this is the way life is going to be. Boom. <laughs> it all the carpet got yanked up from underneath me. And there was an experience, a relational thing with someone that triggered something in me. And I went into a deep, dark night of the soul and later learned that that's what's supposed to happen. And perhaps the degree to which you're going to be in the dark night is correlates or corresponds with the degree to which you had the peak experience of being on top of the mountain possibly so i was dropped on top of the mountain thinking that i'm there for good and then i got plucked off of it and thrown back into the valley and knowing that there's no way i can live in this valley of materialism and egoism and and so i've spent the past nine years clawing my way back up with the energy raging um and um feeling you know the the analogy that i use a lot because i really think it's appropriate is um you know just felt like my i'm i'm getting a complete reboot or rewiring and the cpu i felt like I, my brain was offline and i couldn't function and you know the computer is going a major upgrade you have very little processing and so each day i had to i've had to sort of gauge how much energy I expend or attention on anything because I would just get exhausted and um, I proceeded to do what I thought was the deconstruction of my previous life and I kind of put my practice my coaching practice on hold and um, and, and then so many relationships that I had that I thought were, you know, my friends. And I realized, nah, no, they, they, they liked me for who, for what I've done in life, but they didn't love me for who I was. And that was the, that realization was the beginning of just letting go of so many things in life and all, you know, the houses and the boats and the big yard and, you know, everything that I just spent my life maintaining to prop the ego up with, was just, is just gone. And um, people were like, what is, you know, really what's going on with you? And, and so I just have since made major changes in my life and exploring artwork and, 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 and just listening to what my body is telling me, which a lot of time is just lay down because it's still raging the the energy is still raging through me um so you know i could get into the symptoms of kriyas which are western medicine would call um physiogenic tremors it's kind of like a um a, um what is what is a epileptic habit it's almost like a seizure thank you dear you're welcome um <laughs> you know those still happen and that's a known you know symptom where it's it's twitches and uh, sometimes it happens when i'm thinking about things and so that's like weird you know for most people and so you know i i became really good at just hiding this and trying to live somewhat of a normal life and and i couldn't hide it anymore i just i, I had to just be alone 
and I decided to be alone. Um, but then Kate came along. Um, Sorry. <laughs> finally, someone who understood what I was going through. <laughs> and yeah, so the, the, the symptoms journey. can go. It's been a journey. I mean, I've had gone through all kinds of purification phases of my GI system for like a year and a half of terrible irritable bowel and all kinds of issues. I had two years of um, fibromyalgia and, and rheumatoid arthritis, so I could barely move at times. I had to like, lift my hand onto the keyboard to operate the mouse. And, you know, all those things have, have gone, but there's been other, you know, of all the injuries, many of the chronic pains that I experienced to have are just gone. It, it's just, it, I could feel the Shakti, the energy moving and healing throughout different parts of my body. And I'm amazed that I'm not in the kind of pain that I was in. Um, I will kind of close on thinking about pain. Um, I did experience, um, I had, I also had multiple, like three or four close to death experiences from extreme sports and, um, at age eight, I had a spinal fusion of L lumbar four and five. And at that, in, in those days, it was very invasive and they just, you know, huge scar and chipping bones out of my hip and putting them in my back and being in a body cast for five months and having to learn how to walk again. And no one was there for me. I was just alone in a bed at a hospital bed with a body cast, not able to move. And that, experience was probably um particularly uh triggering for this this kind of profound spontaneous experience with no prior practice meditating or yoga you know i've since you know immersed myself in all of that so i think i'll pause there <laughs> sure well, well that's that's incredible thank you so much for sharing such a, a a big contrast from where you began to where you find yourself today and so many things that we can we can draw upon and take us off on in so many different directions but there's a couple of things that came to me as you were speaking and firstly like you just mentioned it the awakening itself occurred spontaneously you were you were giving a talk and that you know that same day you was it the same day you had you had entered you had gone on the airplane and, and had that experience, or soon it, after? It, uh, there was rumblings. Okay, it, rumblings. It swore right. with the eagles and that whole experience. Okay. Right, and right. So, so I'm just curious, as a speaker, what type of material were you speaking about? Was it empowering? Was it? Could you look back and recognize the spiritual themes in what you were speaking about, or was it very you know technical or or you know jargon and or was it? very really good question, really good question. <laughs> and uh, until i had given that very question a lot of thought i thought there was no spiritual theme throughout my past and now i can connect all the dots and say of course that was driven by a desire to connect with spirit whatever it was and in the case of the book it's called well connected an unconventional approach to building genuine and effective business relationships so it is a business book but it's more about how to navigate on and offline social networking efforts if you will um to to engage with individuals with a very precise formula that I had developed over a thousand over uh, witnessing thousands of clients and introductions and social networking or you know going to a conference and just handshake networking and you know all of the networking that was going on I just saw how 90 percent of it was a total waste of time and I had developed a formula for engaging with people for predictable exponential mutual benefit and exchange so that i was able to apply it for people in job transition looking for funding so it was kind of dry in terms of 
non-spirituality, but it was a desire for to to create deeper connection between two people. Right. Yeah, right. Tell them what it was called before you had to change it. Oh, thank you, dear. Even better. <laughs> the book was called When Lightning Strikes. Well, isn't that something, right? And <laughs> the publisher changed it to Well Connected because they thought it was too metaphysical. Because I had all of these, ah, uh, there we go. I had all of these terminologies around grounding and polarity and energy, but I was using like regular electrical terms, not knowing anything about like energy yeah. at the time. It's true. It was called that. I've seen the manuscript <laughs> before that, they changed it. That's incredible. And for our yeah. listeners who haven't maybe caught on, this is prior to you and Kate beating, maybe even prior to yeah, yeah, when lightning strikes as the the movement even being conceived yet, yes. right? Right, because I created when lightning strikes with my film co-producer Katrina Michelle before Gordon came along, and he found us through one of the videos we put out um, through that through the film effort, and mm -hmm. um, was like, wait a minute, that's my title, and we're like. <laughs> hang on <laughs> so we'll tell you we'll get to that but yeah, yeah. fascinating i mean the, the project existed before him <laughs> right right although it sort of seems like he's always been a part of it and then i that that really does seem like what was going on here right the the metaphysical themes were in your book the publisher picked up on it maybe you didn't uh, consciously recognize that there's something a little far out in what you were sharing but it was there yeah. and the point i i want to make here for our listeners is that and this has been my experience. Whenever I come across somebody who says they've just had a spontaneous awakening, if we do a little digging, it was never spontaneous. Yeah. There was always something that pointed to this. Uh, something was always leading up to this. It doesn't just happen yeah. out of nowhere to anybody. Um, we may not be able to recognize the spiritual or religious things because maybe we didn't experience that growing up. But yeah. this transcends even spirituality as uh uh, something to explore it transcends religion this is a human experience it's a universal experience right and you can be you know fully immersed in in the western corporate world business that sort of thing and it's still you're a candidate for for this awakening to take place because just just by by default because you're a human being and yeah. and and gordon your example really really demonstrates that um so thank you for sharing that thank you I would say, is it okay to chime in? Or of course, I would love I would you. I would love you to chime that in. I found I found the exact same thing to be true of almost everyone I've talked to who've had these experiences, including myself. Looking back, I would say like, oh, my experience started in 2017. No, it did not. It started the moment I was born. And when I look at yeah. him, the way he talks about his story from his perspective, I can I see it from my perspective. Whereas if I were watching as a spectator, I'd be like, there's something about this guy. You know, even though, he, you know, for him, it was mundane, going through the motions, work, life, you know, the whole sort of like, um, what do you call it? Like, may, you know, not mainstream, but um, living the dream. <laughs> yeah, kind of just living the the path that's laid out before you. I would be able to notice, though, that there was something different about him. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. From an outsider's perspective, even though when we're in it, we might not be able to see that about ourselves. Right, right. We're yeah. radiating, right? And and those right. who are sensitive can pick up on it. And in some cases, even when those who aren't very sensitive come across somebody who's radiating very intensely, yeah. they can pick up on it anyway, right? Yeah. Um, totally. And and that brings me to the other point that I was that I was thinking about. I mean, as you were speaking, Gordon, you paused for a moment and you said, Oh, just by speaking about, you know, my journey, speaking about mm -hmm. the awakening, you're experiencing some phenomena within you. Right. And and that alone, it it it, it seems like you're you're channeling your you, the way you share your story today is you're you're channeling, right? And mm -hmm. I experienced the same thing at times. I experienced it with writing as well. It just this incredible it's like being high. Yeah. This incredible yeah. flow is happening. Yeah. And and Kate, you as well, when you speak, like I've watched some of your videos too, you have that same ability to relax into the flow and then become mm -hmm. a channel, become a uh, a, a vessel for for something mm -hmm. higher to speak through you, mm -hmm. um, and that's for me that that's been a a, a great gift that I've been blessed with. Yeah, uh, just to be able to enjoy it for myself, and it seems that people do benefit from like the podcast and things I'm sharing. But it, it comes yeah. from the same place, so I think together the three of us we have that in common, uh, being speakers, uh, mm -hmm. being called to share. 
one thing I just want to point out for those listening is that from what I've found is not everybody is is called to be a speaker or to be a sort of beacon of of messages and that sort of thing. Yeah. People go through the Kundalini awakening and they have different um, different missions, different callings. But it just said, oftentimes it seems like the people who are called to to be messengers are the ones that we see, you know, right. writing books on YouTube, whatever it is. And people right. think, oh, I've got to become like that. But it, it's not always the case. It's just that those are the people that we see the most often. But there are some who are called to just be very low key, Absolutely. but to still radiate, to still radiate. But maybe not, you know, to be a speaker or to yeah. have, a, have a book or anything like that. Oh, yeah. there's so much, so much in your story there, Gordon. There's one <laughs> other thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, was when you looked up and you saw the two eagles above you. Did 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 you in your contemplation after? Did, did that come to mean anything to you? Oh wow! Um, I mean, I've always been really fascinated to the point of like fixated on nature and eagles and owls and and all <laughs> and um, i since have had some pretty remarkable experiences with eagles um in the wild and um so the meaning um i've actually had dreams of on the back of an eagle flying along looking down into the canyons and you know Sounds awesome yeah that, that was a good one um <laughs> But it, you know, in terms of the sim symbolism of it, it it really means you know eagles can see you know it, like why are they flying so high you know they're not going to be able to see anything from a prey from that you know from a mile up or whatever and uh, they they can right. their yeah. senses are just so acute they they can smell they can smell you know that's why vultures circle way way up is they're just tracking scent. Of mm -hmm. carrion um they they can fly so high they can see so well they're so strong they're they're, they're so tuned and so powerful um I, I guess that would be the analogy or oh, yeah. the symbolism mm -hmm. i also think it kind of looks like an eagle yeah <laughs> I, I, I could see that yeah yeah i could see that <laughs> get something yeah. about the brow yeah and yeah, that's your Very spirit helpful. animal yeah, totally. uh, it, it's interesting. Um, the eagles flying above to me when, when you shared that with me, I, I thought of the uh, the caduceus symbol. I think it's caduceus, oh, yeah. it's right with the wings, right at the crown, yeah. where we get our wings. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned that you were on an airplane when you know you experienced this god entering you. You know, you're up in the sky like an eagle, right? That's um, true. I never thought about it that way. <laughs> a few a few months before I had experienced this big rising. I was had I had rumblings like the same way that you said I had rumblings and I there was this really epic sunset after mm. a rainstorm and there was a really beautiful rainbow and the sky was orange and I took a picture of this rainbow and right in the center of the rainbow there was an airplane as well and I oh, looked wow. back on that photo too and I had the same um you know insight that I just shared with you about the wings and, and you know the caduceus symbol and that sort of thing so i see some parallels there it's it's really mm -hmm. interesting yeah Very interesting yeah, have you experienced any sort of symbolism with like animals or or any symbology like on, on your journey like that kate um <laughs> the only thing i can think of is like my obsession with dogs <laughs> which don't seem like you know, the most like mysterious spirit animal, but my experience has been so much about keeping my feet on the ground that, you know, they having four legs and I have in particular a pug who's very stocky and sturdy. And I think without her on this path with me, I would have flown out into the ethers and disintegrated. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I would, I, I don't know, I guess my spirit animal is the pug. Be. <laughs> Little bear, come here. Um, not so much uh, animals, but um, certainly like, I, you know, when, could, when Katrina and I were trying to, we never tried to figure out what we were calling this film because first came the film, then came the community, which we'll get into. But um, it was like the name just dropped into our consciousness. We were like, we're making one lightning strikes, right? And then we looked at each other and we were like, yeah, of course we are, as if we had always been. And, and since then, the lightning symbol, symbology has just been everywhere. And it's been 
the way I've heard this experience be described by practically anyone I've read who's written about it. It's like, it seems to be expressed through um, the lightning bolt and the experience of, you know, a, yeah. Okay. <laughs> if, you could give me, if you could give me one second. Now, I know that we're recording this, but I, I just want to show you something really cool. I think it'll, it'll be worth it. Yeah. Just give me one second. Yeah. There's yeah. always editing. <laughs> Should I? You haven't seen my eagle that I'm carving oh. in the shed. Oh, I haven't. You're right. <laughs> All right. So this is the kind of stuff that I live for. So you just mentioned um, oh, yeah. Yeah. dogs being your spirit animal, and then you've connected that <laughs> over to the lightning bolt. And so yeah. I have a pug myself as well. And oh, she, you do? My, yeah, she's my spirit okay. animal too. Oh my God. I and... was like, why am I mentioning the pug? And, and I was like, okay, but I have to because it's what's coming through. And now I know why. <laughs> right, right. So I have a pug as well. And <laughs> I tell one story where I was laying in bed. I had a, a bed that yeah. was really was high up. She couldn't really jump up there. And yeah. I was just out of my body, like really going through a very, very intense time. Yeah. And she came in and jumped right up on the bed, never was allowed to, never could, laid right on my chest, grounded. Oh. Right. Oh, Brent, no yeah, way. Yeah. This is amazing. So she's very, very special to me. And yeah, after the awakening took place, I began to have these creative urges. And I picked up mm -hmm. the camera and I became a photographer. And she was my model. I'd give her some oh, trees gosh. and photograph her. And then that turned into it's it's my 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 business, my craft. I'm a dog photographer. And I just want to show you. I just I just went over to my uh, my hamper there, and I pulled out this this shirt. So this is my uniform with my logo, and um, that's oh, it right there. No way! Stop. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Uh, so, <laughs> this is like, I feel like we could end the podcast right now. Like this is how it happens. Right. This is how it happens. Right. That is so awesome. <laughs> that's amazing. So so we're in the flow today for sure. We really are. And and it feels great. It does. And this is for people that may be wondering, you know, what's synchronicity all about? This is what yeah. it's all about, right? Yeah. It's showing us that things are going well. We're we're doing something, something right in sense mm -hmm. of being, you know, we're surrendered to, to, mm -hmm. to the experience that that Shakti, that God is is yeah. is uh is is pushing us towards, you know, in that direction, the yeah. flow. Yeah. So that exactly. that logo. I, it's, it's funny because I, I thought, okay, I need a logo that represents dogs and photography. And so I, I, I thought, I thought really hard and I thought, okay, I'll get a little cartoon of me holding a camera next to a dog. And I had right. some, I'd commissioned somebody to draw that for me. It looked really foolish, but then when <laughs> I let go and I just relaxed this, this, uh, this came to me, you know, like a, a lightning bolt uh, can represent the flash yeah. and the dog, of course. And, and, uh, so it was inspired by David Bowie, right? Uh, right. Yeah. Ziggy right. Stardust. Oh, uh, That's right, absolutely right. amazing. You you mentioned the manifestation piece that I didn't include in my share, but during the peak phase, the, the manifestation was pretty much constant. So, you know, I just didn't have to do anything. I was animated and the universe was providing and i'm like oh i've got to write something down and i look on the sidewalk and there's a pen you know oh of course i expect that you know or suddenly i needed money for this or that or, and, and just like boom something out of the blue it was just 50 times a day like you almost know? simultaneous to the asking yeah it was it was it was in the moment of i was not even thinking about what i needed and there it was yeah That's right amazing. right so in that peak experience, would you describe it as being in a resistance-free state, in other words? Entirely. Right. I was right. so open, perhaps, well, I don't know if there's such a thing, but I was too open. But yeah, I was just so open. And people really like didn't know what to make of me, people that knew me. <laughs> they was like, what is going on? And they were either really drawn to it or really scared by it. Mm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah how about how about skeptical were people did you ever share things like this like hey you know i i well, I, I think of something and there it is and they say ah oh, you're crazy man or you know? i i 
pretty quickly learned that I needed to modulate uh, sensor how much I shared with people because at first I was just like everybody needs to know about this and and oh yeah I, I felt a lot of skepticism and oh he's gone off the deep end um and so I I, I ratcheted it back and really was selective of with whom I would share this story with, even with yeah totally right mm -hmm. I feel that too. There was a time where I was, you know, I, I, it was so incredible. I wanted everybody to know. Right. But yeah, you know, if you really think about it, you know, how are we going to convince the whole world about all this stuff that's so far out? Yeah. Eventually yeah, I had to, like you said, censor myself a little bit, but then this podcast became my outlet where I can be a little yeah. far out and I don't have to, to worry about people, you know, coming at, going out of their way to tell me I'm you know I'm losing my mind yeah I mean this this podcast alone we're already 45 minutes in if you've listened 45 minutes in <laughs> you know, you're you're a little you get what's going on a little bit at least or right. you're curious yeah exactly oh that's so fascinating so much so much there um wow but wow. let's yeah. let's wow. shift a little bit and and give Kate the floor hmm. sure let us know about about your experience I, I believe that you had a bit more of a spiritual inclination leading up to this. Can can you give us a background about what what yeah. what brings you to this point where you're at on your journey? Yeah, looking back, I think like I must have died like in a in an ashram in India or something because I came in very just like aware of there being so much more than other people could see, and I, but I didn't know. I didn't know it. I only knew that like there was more than the people around me. There was more to the experience of life than what I saw. And it made me, I was on the one hand, I was like a very um, alive and vibrant kid. And my dad will say like, Oh, you know, you had the joie de vivre, but I, inside I was really sad. Cause I was like, well, where's the thing that I see that I know is there that I remember, but I don't know what I remember it from because I'm in a two-year-old's body or a five-year-old's body. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like I was always, that was always sort of my, my primary MO was like seeking that. And so I found myself in like, I tell the story all the time, but I was in high school and I was drawing ohm symbols on my trapper keeper in, you know, 1995 before they were printed on yoga pants all, the, all over the world and um, not knowing what that symbol meant, but just being really drawn to it and really being drawn to like Sanskrit and Eastern teachings. And so what's interesting about us is we grew up in kind of similar scenarios and very like upper middle class beach communities. And I think where Gordon sort of took on that identity more, even though it wasn't him, I rebelled against it. So I was like, get me out of here. I'm going to California. And I went to yoga school in I think 2000 and um, just like, gobbled up everything I could that was spiritual. And um, I think, you know, it's, there's like so many parts to the story. Like I, a lot of it was, was, um, you know, the sort of up and out feel good stuff that can take you away from your body and from your trauma that you might be trying to suppress. But it was also um, very genuine. Um what do I want to say about that? I think, I think because I was always really sensitive as a child, the trauma that I experienced caused me to sort of leave my myself. So this like natural propensity I had for seeking was almost reinforced by what my trauma response was. It does that make sense. Mm. Okay. So it got to a point where it was like so much I didn't know these words then, but it was like so much kind of Shakti and so much expansion that my physical system couldn't hold it. It was like, it was just too much coupled with a bunch of things in my life that I was using, including my spirituality to sort of manage my day-to-day -day life to keep those really scared ego parts. So those really scared, um, contracted hurt parts from being exposed blew open so everything just sort of 
looking back, I can see the perfect orchestration of all these elements that came into being at the exact moment that I would crack wide open. <laughs> um, but it was sort of the convergence of like, I couldn't keep my, I couldn't keep my traumas under wraps anymore. At the same time, I was like going so far away from my body in with the spiritual stuff that it was like the perfect storm to have a Kundalini awakening. So that's kind of in a nutshell, <laughs> my story. Um, mm -hmm. And then I can go on from there if you want, but that's like the sort of history of what brought me to 2017, where I experienced incredible lightning <laughs> down the left side of my body, along with lifetimes upon lifetimes of trauma and sensation that I didn't even know was possible to experience as a human. Interesting. Well, well let's go right into it. If you're willing to sure. tell us about th that experience, that moment when yeah. lightning struck. You know, I like to talk about this because I feel like it might be one of the most helpful things I can do for other people who are on the path is to like really go into what I feel like some teachers gloss over because they get to the other side and they're like, okay, well, I might as well teach about oneness. But <laughs> for the people who aren't there yet, <laughs> knowing that what they're going through is normal and that other people have gone through it is like, for me, it was so helpful to hear other people's accounts. So yeah, it was like summer 2017. I was, um, you know, in, immersed in all kinds of breath work, bhakti fest, chanting all the time, like really just feeling this expanded mm -hmm. connection. I was manifesting like a maniac. <laughs> I had a and I was working in Hollywood. I almost had a deal with the Henson company, which was a lifelong dream to work with the Muppets. They were going to produce um, a story that I, a story and character that I had come up with and I had investors. So it was like, all of these things were like coming true. And, you know, you don't just get a meeting with the Jim Henson company. It was like six different synchronicities that had to snap into place for me to even get that meeting, then a second meeting, then a third one. And it's like, my dreams were coming true. <laughs> and then Suddenly, the Henson company pulled out. The investors were like, oh, wait a minute. Um, and it all kind of crumbled. And what I felt in my body was just this like, <gasps> it was like an, oh, shit. I don't have a backup plan. I'm going to die. And then from my left big toe all the way up to the left side of my head, there was this intensity of electricity like I've never Again, like I never knew a person could experience. It was like lightning. There's no other way to describe it than to say it was like lightning. It was enough to make me like convulse, but it was far more than just physical. It was like infused with like the very shadowy nature of the cosmos, like so much heaviness and darkness and terror. And it's hard to describe in words, but anybody who's been through this kind of knows like, it was a level of anxiety that was, imp it's impossible for me to describe. It was like, take the worst panic attack anyone could have and then turn up the voltage like times a hundred. And that's what was happening to my body, which caused, I think, even more fragmentation and more um, of a, you know, somatic trauma response. So I experienced a lot of, um, I didn't know what it was then, but depersonalization and derealization, we've talked about that before. And the way mm -hmm. that manifested for me was, I couldn't, I didn't feel like I was in this reality. Like I felt like there was a giant bubble around me mm -hmm. and my surroundings and I couldn't get into the reality of like, you know, my mom and dad sitting at the dinner table or my sister on the computer doing her work. Um, and that was terrifying. And I would look down at my hands and I would be like, whose hands are these? And everything just started to look really weird. Like, like, a. It, it kind of like, you know, how if you say your name over and over again, you're like, what is my name? Like, it's just things start to sound weird. It was like that with everything. Like, I'd be like, the vegetables, they grow in the ground. And like, you know, it, it normal, conscious, healthy consciousness is like, that's a miracle. The way my, my psyche was operating was like, it was evil. <laughs> the thought that there were vegetables growing in the ground was an evil. It was like infused with the very, um, uh like like the i don't know like the only way i could think just to say it is like the shadow aspect of this duality everything just had this like murky 
disgusting, terrifying, horrific undertone to it. So those are some of the symptoms. And to compound it, I had a lot of people when I was in LA and I had a lot of people I was frantically searching for answers. Interestingly, my investor funding came through. It actually ended up coming through and I was able to use it to kind of save my own life. So that's a whole nother story about how like, you know, things show up when you need them. But um, because there was a, you know, part of it built in for for me as a producer's fee. But um, what was I saying? Oh, I couldn't find like uh, people would say like, okay, you're feeling this disconnection because you're going to the fifth dimension. Or they would tell me things like they that just weren't helpful. They really weren't helpful. And just let me led me to feeling more and more lonely, isolated, misunderstood, batshit crazy and traumatized. <laughs> so yeah, which is, you know, what we're trying to steer people away from in the community. Right. So, so tell us yeah. a little bit about what you did find was helpful or relieving yeah. if it wasn't just having to ride it out. Was there anything, any, any teaching modality practice, anything that you might want to share with others or that you'd like to speak about that helped you? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think there's a perfect lead into talking about the film and the, the project because I met, it was about a year in, and I knew it was Kundalini at this point, um, but everything that I read on online, and it's fascinating to go back because it's been a couple of years now, and I actually go online, people send me videos like yours, and you know, there's a, a lot of people on there that do have really wonderful resources now because you know so many more people are talking about it um, in ways that are helpful. But at the time, I wasn't finding anything that I wasn't finding anything that was helpful to me. And I was seeing a lot of professionals that I would have to educate about the phenomenon, which isn't helpful. And again, through a series of like 12 different synchronicities, I found myself at a chant workshop. Um, I shouldn't have been there. It was really hard to get to. It's a long story, but it was like, I, I found myself there. And that's where I met Katrina, Michelle, who is the co-founder of the film, um, with me. And she was at the time, um, the president of assist the American center of the integration for spiritually transformative experiences. And that organization, um, they are dedicated to helping or, you know, to teaching healing professionals about these phenomena, about this phenomenon, not just Kundalini, but all, all forms of spiritual emergency. And she had done her doctoral research on spiritual emergency and, um, knew exactly what I was going through. And so we formed like a really fast friendship. And it was the first time I felt like, okay, someone knows what's going on with me and it's, I'm not crazy. And so we formed a, a really fast friendship and then um, went about seeking answers from people. And um, through the film, I think we found a lot of good answers, but for me, what's been the most healing thing have has been just the relationships I've met along the way with people like you, with Gordon, with Katrina, with, you know, with people who, mm. who have a ability either through experience or interest to normalize this. And so it really hasn't been a technique, but rather um, a relationship with, um, mm. yeah, just with others who are able to hold space in a way that's open and understanding and, um, leaves room for me to have an experience often that they don't understand. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> May I share something that you could probably elaborate on? We both could is in answer to your question, Brenna is, you know, what helped? Well, Lord knows I, I tried everything, you know, with, countless you know, 30 40 teachers masters healers you know you name it modalities practices yeah. paths lineages Same. gurus i mean just seeking seeking money that i didn't have to spend a yeah. fortune okay same the same you know <laughs> yeah. neurofeedback how many 100 sessions? neurofeedback sessions um yeah so many different things yeah yeah cutting so, edge technologies you know with like leading world therapist it's just crazy making you know like there's got to be a way to fix this 
process or help it or either got to do something. But the whole point is you don't. <laughs> it's, it's, it's about <laughs> surrendering, but you can't when you're in the thick of it. Yeah. And you, you just, you know, feel like you have to exhaust all possibilities of rectifying this situation and um so i think it's it's like we're broken it's got to be fixed that whole mentality control and uh so i think for your listeners viewers i think it's important to know that everybody's different and everybody's rising is different and what works for someone it will not work for someone else but the one thing that we both clearly found was the most relieving was just to hear other people's stories and to know that we weren't crazy and that we were yeah. validated and that's the mm -hmm. most powerful that's one of the most fundamental human needs we have yeah. and when you're suddenly invalidated about something like this profound it's it's an additional it's, trauma it's, it's a trauma mm -hmm. right amen to that <laughs> I, I really feel that as well yeah just knowing that this is not an isolated event happening to me i'm not a victim of whatever this is exactly there are other people experiencing this and together we aren't victims either we are being blessed by a great invitation yeah and it might not feel that way right and, but it together it doesn't feel that yeah, way yeah it's amazing because together there's something about we know enough people at this point where it's like almost not weird it's just like you know it's like you're just having kriyas okay that's what's happening on, on thursday like yeah. it's just yeah great great yeah. well thanks so much for sharing your journey kate sure. I, I just want to make one quick point and then i really want to talk a little bit about your both of your relationships with Shakti mm -hmm. and especially her influence or her direction when it comes to the film. But before we get into that, I just I just wanted to point out something that I noticed between the two of your journeys. So we have, mm -hmm. Gordon, you didn't have much of a spiritual experience uh, leading up to your, your awakening, and yet it, it made you a convert immediately, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Kate, you had been on a spiritual journey. You had traveled and and you know done the yoga and, and the, the yeah. all of the the spiritual scene you you know you'd, you'd been around and still when it occurred to you there was a sense of what the hell is going on yep. right. and that goes to show at least from the way i see it that this force is so powerful and so so otherworldly so transcendent whatever you'd like to call it yeah that it can convert somebody who's got nothing to do with this and it can also confuse the hell out of people who have been around the spiritual scene itself. So well said. Yes, exactly. And and that alone, it, 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 it's, it's really interesting because on the one hand, we can see, you know, there's many who are skeptical of this thing and understandably so. Yeah. And yet, you know, we have people who are, who are made instant converse. You know, they know I had a divine experience. I'm not going crazy. That was real. Perhaps mm -hmm. the most real experience I've had in my whole life, maybe more real than, than what we're experiencing here in this moment. Mm -hmm. And there are other people who you may have even heard of Kundalini Awakening. And when it happens to you, you're like, oh, I don't know. I'm going crazy. Right. Yeah. It's a very, very extreme, very polarizing experience. And I just wanted to point that out. I just thought that was really fascinating. The two of you complement each other really that's well really on many levels, many levels, but that's something about your journey stood out to me. And mm -hmm. I think the other point as well was, uh, Goran, you mentioned you had a, a sort of top-down awakening. You invited God in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, Kate, you had the experience of it rising, right? Not even from the base of your spine, but from yeah. the feet, from the feet. <laughs> Right. And yeah. and that alone is it's a beautiful complimentary. And then just looking at you together there, I can feel the energy, I can feel the balance. And it, it's really beautiful to see and, and have you both here present with me, mm -hmm. uh sharing awesome. in this way. Like there's a great um a, a great uh flow you have together. So so thank you so much for for sharing with me like that. I appreciate both of your journeys. It's nice to have that reflected back. Mm. Appreciate it a lot. Oh, oh you're yeah. so welcome. So mm -hmm. now go ahead, go ahead, Gordon. I was just going to say, and, and one of the things that we become accustomed to is very to varying degrees, a, a, a constant energy flowing through our bodies, um, vibration, electrical heat, 
energy that it ebbs and flows depending on who we're with or the environment and, and <laughs> it's it's shakti for those who may not be familiar with that would be considered shakti or actually prana in traditional kundalini science if you were to dive into that but that's just sort of what's happening for us or for me yeah, right it's now. so and much it's, a and part it's of very it's very strong right now because you're teasing it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i'm feeling it as well i'm feeling it as well yeah uh it's uh it's a little distracting i could say because i'm sitting here i feel i have a job to do i have to host i've got to got to keep things flowing and whatnot but there's something calling me into a, a sort of transcendent state a little bit so it's a fun a fun yeah. little dance here but yeah. I, i'm it's nice to know we're all experiencing it together maybe there's some out, out there that are listening that are feeling the radiance from mm. Kate, from gordon that's happening here and it's not mm. necessarily an exclusive exclusively spiritual radiance this is the radiance okay. you know if we were talking about horrible things we our listeners our viewers would be feeling horrible we yeah. were talking about something exciting they'd be feeling exciting but we're talking about something divine yes and we're emanating that 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 shakti that energy that divinity so if you're out there and you're feeling it and you're wondering what are the mechanisms behind what i'm feeling here i just wanted to elaborate a little bit on that but if you're not feeling it it's not a problem at all maybe mm. maybe there's nothing being radiated here you know that's up to the, <laughs> up to the valid, whatever it is right know. right and if i might add is that while perhaps we may appear to be as you said, radiating or whatever, there have been an ins there's been an insane amount of time of wanting to poke your <laughs> eyes out with a hot stick or you know, just end it now. The pressure, the pain, the existential, you know, that's the dark night part of it. Um which is just beyond depression or anxiety or psychosis. It's just Utter hell. I'll just Utter say hell. That. And that's what we really want to, you know, speak about the unsexy side of it and, and provide a safe haven for people to express that within the lightning strikes community. Because I will say, and I know you were going to explain something for the listeners. You're going to kind of break something down, but is it okay if I just comment on that real quick? Oh, of course. I don't um, I don't remember what I was even talking about at this point. So go ahead. I know, right. So I was gonna say that was one thing. Um the unsexy side it, part of the name just kind of also dropped in because I think I really felt let down by the spiritual the spiritual community that I was involved in. Um not intentionally, but there was uh you know there's such a glossed over sort of like Instagram filtered look to the spiritual communities a lot of the spiritual communities that are so mainstream these days that you know no one was no one wanted to talk about what I was going through it was like it was either a nervous breakdown or it was um just ignored you know and it's it just felt really unfair mm. <laughs> there yeah so we want to actually bring light to this aspect and, and mm. give people permission to talk about it and also um, teach people how to how to teach people that it's real and also hold, how to hold space for people who are going through these experiences mm. right yeah yeah that was the and a, likewise if i might add again is that um you know yoga teachers who would be talking to talk and uh, this is what we're doing with the energy and then i'd say i can't do you know kabbalah bhati breathing because it <laughs> triggers the kundalini and i have violent hiccups and yeah they're looking at me like what right you know and ever since they're thinking oh, that guy's weird or, um, like, or having to educate doctors and you know therapists and you know whatever yeah. you know like do i tell a surgeon that i might have kriyas <laughs> on the operating table or something after a knee replacement in february do i say no i'm not going to say anything you know a lot of um, discernment <laughs> right right and I, we have very similar missions with with my work and with the series itself it's to bring it out in the open yeah um, my intention moving forward is to get more and more guests on just to share yeah. their stories and show look at all of these people these are like yourselves they're people that are worldly established you have your head on your shoulders and you're saying look this is what happened to me right, right? and 
I, I that's that's my intention is just to bring it out in the open in the past yeah. it was very esoteric and right. there must have been good reason for that but things are a little different now things are moving very mm -hmm. quickly and so yeah. we've got to come out in the open and, and speak yeah. about this um, because it's happening to more and more people all around um, you know lightning is striking them you could say um, and and with that, I'll, I'll segue a little bit into what I was speaking about was a topic that I really love. And I think the two of you together, along with anybody else involved in the project itself, you're all dancing this dance, this beautiful relationship with Shakti. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's bringing something about through you, through the film, to the community. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Kundalini, with Shakti, with God, however you'd want to call it? Talk about the personal relationship you have. Um, mm -hmm. Kate, I'll, I'll get you to share a little bit about that. In, yeah. in, in particular, her, her, calling to you to to bring this community bring this film into existence how does that look what does that feel like on a on a on a sort of weekly or monthly or daily basis yeah you know it's so interesting to be asked that question because I sometimes don't know if like art is imitating life or life is imitating art or it seems like they're both kind of co-arising at the same time like you know we started out um with the idea for this film was like two girls on a, on the road searching for answers and um we knew that we would find some answers but we also knew that the real healing would come from the friends and family we met along the way and we filmed a trailer and then we were ready to film the rest of the film when COVID broke out so it was like 2020 February we were about to do the rest of our filming so but we couldn't we couldn't go on the road everything was shutting down so we put our interviews online and we just started getting like these incredible comments from people saying like, I can't believe you're talking about this. Like this is happening to me too. And he was one of them. <laughs> and, um, mm -hmm. and out of that, a community just sort of naturally formed itself. So it's not that I didn't do any work to get it to happen, but it's like what all of the <laughs> people that um, told me, would happen came true which was you know like several teachers would say like this force will take you down but it will also put you back together and use your use you in a way you never dreamed possible so right. it's like i'm getting to use my filmmaking skills i'm getting to use my marketing skills i'm getting to use my personality like you know it's just like but all in a way i wasn't intending so it's like it kind of just put me in this like giant blender turned me into mush for a good five years. And then, you know, something is being created with like the raw materials of what make up me as an essential, as the essential part of my being um, to bring something out into the world. And so, so it's interesting on a day to day, it's like, I'll find myself being like, oh my God, I don't know what to post to the community. And then suddenly Gordon will be like, what are you doing? And I'll be like, I'm posting to the community. Like, it just, mm -hmm. it's like, I can't think about it it's really frustrating because sometimes I'm like, how am I going to, how am I going to grow this? How am I going to reach more people? And the truth is I'm not like, it's just happening right. through me. Right. It's like, like, he'll be like, uh, well, you know, I'll be like, I can't do anything today. I don't have any information. I have to just lie down. My head hurts too much. And, and then suddenly, say, like, like, where'd she go? And, and then and I'm just like writing a post outside or making a video. Like it just happens as it just, I just have to say yes to when the, the pulse is there and sometimes mm -hmm. the pulse is there and sometimes the pulse isn't there. Like it's either on or off, yeah. but I'm learning and I'm le able to lean into trusting the force of Shakti more because I'm seeing how she works. You know, it's like, I'm seeing that I might not have to write a post on the Tuesday. I might write it on the Wednesday morning and it'll be inspired and it'll take 10 minutes and it'll reach you know, however many people that are looking for it. Um, so it's kind of this amazing dance of like, just mm. really like an authentic, um, an authentic desire that comes from a real like heart, you know, true heart calling. Mm. Um, and then letting go of what that's meant to look like, and then watching it kind of uh, out picture through me in a way that's greater than I could have pictured if I had tried to picture it. 
<laughs> right. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, it makes perfect sense. It okay. makes perfect sense because that's generally speaking, that's that's the way I operate as well. Of course, yeah. Um, if you look at uh, the sort of timing of the releases of this podcast, they're all over the place. Yeah, right. I don't right. have a schedule where it's, you know, I can't, right. I can't tell, hey, subscribe. I put out a, a video. I put out an yeah, episode exactly. once every week. You know, I, I can't say anything like that because yeah. I'm just an employee. The right. boss is what, you know, right. tells me what to do when. And right. it's an ongoing dance. There's, it's not a, I'm not a perfect dancer at it. You could say there are times where I'm like, oh man, I'm feeling guilty. You know, I haven't put out anything in a while. Yeah. But the inspiration hasn't been there. And then at the same time, there's some, I do have to play my part in becoming receptive to the inspiration as yeah. well. So yeah. there is like, there is some work that I must do as well. Yeah. On, on In that vein, just speaking today with you, there was a thought that uh, that occurred to me, you know, I felt a little nervous about our conversation today. And I thought, mm -hmm. you know what? If it's whatever's meant to happen, it's going to happen because this isn't, this isn't my show. Yeah. Right. So just like that, I was relaxed. There's it's a tremendous just, relief in that. Right, right. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it, it's very, very relieving. Um, but with that, of course, we can't take credit either, right? We can't take responsibility or pressure. And then the credit also, it all goes to God. It all goes to Shakti. Yeah. And uh, I, I feel comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. And there is something that's very um, thrilling and satisfying about that also is like just to be a dancer with the divine in that way. It's really, it's delicious. Like I wouldn't want to have mm. my will be done because it would be less fun. You know, it's like, I think right. in the beginning there's that like, oh shit, like I have to, how am I going to keep everything under control? And then I think over time, it slowly starts to, you slowly start to trust that there's something far greater and far more delicious playing you. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. uh, both of you feel free to answer. I'm just curious. Do you have a a sort of relationship with Shakti in which you pray or have a dialogue? Um, mm -hmm. or something like that. Maybe you don't always hear anything back, but do you have a sort of ongoing mm -hmm. sort of uh do you communicate with her? through mm. thought through words or is it more of a feeling is it is mm. it something like that that's a really interesting question mm. i have a feeling our answers are going to be a little different mm -hmm. <laughs> or very different um shall i um i talk to her all the time <laughs> um in prayer um just say please guide me um you know I just tried something. It was painful. It was not your will. And I don't know why the hell I did it again and again, whatever it was, you know, and then just, just allow me to hear you. And it's all in the body. I mean, the body is just screaming with information and it's just a matter of building the faith and building the ability to interpret what she's telling us with a twitch here or Oh, there's heartburn again. I know I can't eat tomatoes anymore, but I love tomatoes, you know? No, nope. you know, the, the the system gets, my case gets very sensitive. And I, I just have, you know, you just, as you purify, it means like everything, you know? And so I'm listening to her, communicating to her in that way. Um, sometimes I'll differentiate between Shakti, which is more internal, and God, which is external. Um, it, but there's some form of dialogue with a divine source and, and communication and or listening and, you know, and like, what do you want me to do um, most of the time? Hmm. Great. Yeah, that's, that's my experience as well. I've found that to be what resonates with me, what feels comfortable to me. I know that it's not for everybody per se. Mm -hmm. um, I've just found that easy to, to, to use those avenues to have that relationship. Mm -hmm. When I say a prayer or I ask for support or guidance, I can tell myself, well, I've done that and now I can let it go. Mm -hmm. Having actually gone through the ritual of, you know, having the dialogue, having the, the expression, but for others, it may be just a feeling, you know, well, God has me. That's okay. I'm all good. Everything's good. You know? I think that's kind of more my experience. I, I think what's so interesting is that I've become seemingly 
less spiritual since this experience, mm-hmm. although it's seemingly because I'm obviously more connected than I ever was, but it's really in, in a, it's just in an embodied way. Like I don't really put any energy into mm-hmm. a dialogue or a, um, I don't know, all really all I do, it's going to sound so boring. It's just tune into my body and then I go this way or that way. <laughs> <laughs> and so I feel like there's this continual kind of just stream of like yeses and nos that that I'm able to rely on. Sometimes it's really clear. Mm. Sometimes it's not as clear. It's increasingly more and more clear, though, I got to say. Yeah, um, it and it's probably really annoying for Gordon because I'm like, <laughs> well, I I did a better job of contorting myself into a pretzel based on societal conditioning and I had a lot more karma, whatever, to burn off. And so it was a little frustrating. Kate said she's rewilding me. But, you know, <laughs> like, what's the plan? What's the plan for the day? What what what, what do you do? Or what, what, you know, what happens if we get a flat tire? Or what, what, you know, contingency planning and just that constant worrying and, and trying to anticipate what could happen and what you should do and what's the right thing and all of that. You know... I mean, I, you know, I can, and I'm I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning quickly, but, um, we're good balance for each other. Yeah. But, um, but the communication to your question is that, um, it eventually you, you just trust and, and it doesn't mean that you're apathetic or I mean, we're very engaged, but when it comes to s- decisions and directions and all, it's um, all like we'll just go, you feel. know, just get in the car. Where are we going? I don't know. And then we end up having an amazing experience as soon as we get out of the way. I think what's interesting is you, I, with this path, I'm just, I'm just like having this awareness now is you, you don't get, you can't get too far into the future with the mm. impulse. It's just, the impulse is kind of in the immediate, like, okay, it's to do this now or to do this, you know, in the next moment, then you do this. And then the next moment you do this. So, I mean, you know, obviously we have to be responsible. We have to plan things and we have to take care of business and stuff. But um, in general, it's just for me been about like coming back to my body and what my body says in the moment. And it's like, that's my, my spirituality is very simple. My relationship with Shakti is pretty much that (laughs) well it it seems to be working out quite well considering (laughs) the blossoming of the when lightning strikes movement Mm. uh where all of that's going yeah the community itself is very interesting it's unlike any other community spiritual community that i've come across Mm. in that different teachers guides people with something to share are invited to lead they're given an audience to express and it's not just one individual it's not just one system not just one tradition or modality it's it's very open and i especially love the idea that within the community there are different events in Mm -hmm. which we have you have different speakers different people Mm -hmm. sharing facilitating with with maybe varying styles varying backgrounds you know if you get them both in a room together you ask them the same question they may contradict each other and yeah that's that's fine this is a very multi-dimensional journey yeah. but that's what makes it so interesting because i know that there have been some communities that i've sort of you know browsed and checked out a little bit yeah and if there's only one authority you could say Though there is something to be said about the benefit of that, it oftentimes can lead to a certain toxic environment where people are, um, you know, uh, overpowered by one particular attitude or or, or approach. Mm -hmm. But with what we have here, it's very, very free and open. Mm -hmm. And we, you had somebody who had a, a, a Christian background, we'd written a book on the yeah. Kundalini awakening from a Christian context, right? There are there's uh, I'm I'm so sorry I, I forgot in his name Philip he, Saint Romain. Yeah, he's great. Philip Saint Romain. And then the other day I was in a 
in a call with many other people with Danny Antman, who comes from a yeah. Jewish background. Right. And so we can see that once again, this is a universal experience that we're having. This is not just limited to, you know, Hinduism and yoga. Right. And we don't have to look at it through those lenses. And, and, with the community, with the movement, when lightning strikes, we're seeing that, and and you're giving an, an audience the the full you know front row view to all of these different people coming from different walks of life that yeah. are are really contextualizing what's going on here from different mm. and and providing different types of context. And I think that's really beautiful. It's it's genius. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I would like to you know thank you for that. Give you all the credit for that. Oh, um, God. No. Yeah, right. I was going to say, I, I knew you were going to, you know, divert. Well, I am the one that has to make the graphics. So I'll take some okay. credit. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, so what, what you've allowed to come through you is so incredible. And it all started with, with Kate going on your journey, um, looking for answers, connecting with mm -hmm. some really, really incredible people. There's some, some very, uh, uh, well-known characters in the in the trailer alone and <laughs> yeah. that alone speaks volumes the trailer it's you know it's, it's a very short clip but there's so much mm -hmm. value in the trailer alone and that's why i think you know a community is formed around the trailer yeah. um the documentary itself is there any any outlook any anything that we can we can get excited about is that uh any timeline well it's interesting because it's kind of it's being informed by the needs of the community so it's almost like the film that we set out to make made itself in real life. And now we're going to start capturing it, capturing what's already happening, what's, what's happening organically. So um, yeah, I mean, we're kind of, now that we've got mm. the community sort of structure down, um, we're looking at, um, you know, creating more of a focus on the film and Gordon's putting together a summary and Katrina and I are getting together and, and, you know, visualizing the, story and things like that but um I'm say something. yeah so sort of in keeping with the previous subject is there a timeline no <laughs> well right. when the investors come which we are aiming for um that is going to have to change a little bit you know but they will be like spirited uh investors uh so we want to we probably don't someone who's had this experience who probably, wants to probably help, someone who's had, yeah you know who wants uh, to help just, shed light on it exactly and and understands the organic nature of the evolution of this project and and the fact that it's for the people by the people yeah. um you know what we're learning in these integration circles which are really intimate but powerful i i, I totally underestimated the power of them until so i would show up Great, get out of bed. Just <laughs> my head is throbbing from too much pressure energy. And these people would share for the first time, you know, things like at first, everybody's just sort of sitting there in their little window boxes on the Zoom call. And, you know, and then one by one, someone would share something and become vulnerable. And then it just by the end of the call i mean everybody is laughing and happy and 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 then we then the, the testimonials and the feedback just comes pouring in and um yeah so that's where like so, the focus has and that's that's where we're that's the richness of the community that we're learning from because we really want to not only normalize this experience with the documentary but also serve as a voice for people who feel like a voice for the voiceless, which is what you said is, you know, sort of basically the purpose of your podcast is to give people a place to share their story and mm -hmm. that it can be any, have mm -hmm. anybody. Yeah, right. I, mean, I say I'm recently coming out of the closet about this. Yeah, you are. Because of the fear um, originally in the closet because of the fear of reprisal. Mm. Oh, I, I can totally relate. It's it's a very, very challenging balance to find how to really be open about this. And that may be why so many people feel that they're alone in this. Yeah. Because the fact of the matter is there are many, many of us. We just have to yeah. come out and and be open and be vulnerable yeah. and trust that you know nothing bad is gonna happen in doing so. Yeah. Right. 
And it's like about also creating a shared language. Like, you know, it's like I could, when I had the flu, I could talk to my sister about the flu because my sister's had the flu, Mm. but she doesn't, she's never had Kriyas or she's never had, you know, like this sort of dark night of the soul. um, Like imagine that degree that I have. And so we can't share in that because we have, we don't have the shared language, but among community members, it's like, we're all talking about the same thing. And there's incredible relief in that, Mm. you know? Um, Right. But it, but the, but the feeling is as if you've got some sort of bizarre disease, no one knows what it is, and it's there's no physical manifestation. You're and, 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 you, and, you, and you look, you look fine. <laughs> yeah, you know? right. And and inside you're like dying, <laughs> uh, yeah. an ego. But I don't we don't like to use that term. <laughs> um, yeah, and you feel um, like you're dying. And and one of the things that this is a bit of a side note which is from what we're learning and i think you in our first talk with you brent um you know this this is a, this phenomenon of spontaneous spiritual awakening as a result of trauma a lot of people are saying it's mostly trauma mm-hmm. um given world events um you know trauma spiritual practice, psychedelics, near-death experiences, um, psychedelics with the advent, the, the re-advent of psychedelics, um, this is happening to people very frequently and they're not prepared. Yeah, so right. we're, we're noticing that it is growing, that, that it, it, you know, almost as the universe's reaction to what we've done to this universe this world this is the only way out if people wake up and realize you know you i can't hurt a fly you know when, when this happens you you're back to your question about guidance or or a relationship with the energy the um is the she's brutal the energy is brutal and 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 if you mess with her and you do the wrong thing it's 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 a visceral you get punished you get punched <laughs> it's it's worse it's more than heartburn you know it <laughs> it is just uh, i can't you know can't lie i can't do the, anything other than what is in honor of all creation and you know it's um it's very inconvenient <laughs> it really is in, especially in this in this world you know yeah. Yeah, but that's yeah. that's part of the part of the practice of yeah. at least for me of of maintaining those higher values. It's it's calling yeah. us to something higher. Yeah. Not to settle for the 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 easy way of doing things, but being called to something higher. Yeah. And that's really what I feel it's all about. And and once we do get to those those we establish ourselves in those higher states of consciousness where love is you know, the, the predominant lens through which we view the world. Mm-hmm. I, w- I like to say that that's when the, the unsexy side of the awakening, the challenging things, the, the horror, the terror, the discomfort, yeah, it subsides yeah. and we can become established in a state of, of peace. Yeah. That wanes mm-hmm. at times, you know, we'll still get sick. We'll still have, you know, difficult emotional experiences. We'll yeah. still get triggered. Yeah. But there's a, a newfound sort of a baseline of stability. Peace. Right. right. Mm-hmm. I agree. Right. It becomes a little sexier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all sexy, really, but it doesn't <laughs> feel sexy at the time. <laughs> yeah. Well said. Well said. Uh, yeah. uh there, there is so much for us to talk about. I, I think I we're gonna we're gonna chat some more at some point. Yes. Please. Let our audience know where they can connect with yeah. the When Lightning Strikes movement. Yeah. Send them to the yep. best place. So we, um, for people who want to stay up to date on the film and basically get on our, our newsletter, um, they can watch the trailer also at when lightning when lightning strikes film.com for people who want to get involved in the community who are having these experiences and want to connect with people in a safe space we have our own online network a community where um i will prompt you know questions that people can think about 
every day and the community responds. Um, we have a beautiful group of people who are all supporting each other through this experience and we host um, weekly uh, integration support circles where there's no leader, there's just a safe space to show up with whatever you've got going on to say, I fucking hate this, I want to die, or I'm having like the most ecstatic day ever and like I love everyone and want to make out with them. Whatever you have going on, you can bring and people understand what you're going through. So we do that. We do um, events like you were talking about with different, you know, we don't call them experts because we kind of think that we're the experts. You know, we're all, we're kind of leveling the playing field, but we do bring on people. We as in the community, we do not. Oh yeah, yeah, not us, the not community. <laughs> we are the collective, the, the, collective the collective are the conscious. experts. Thank you for that. That's a very big, that's a very big distinction. <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone in the community is learning how to become their own expert. That's the beauty of it. And so we'll have on certain special guests by request or people that I've been able to contact who are willing to share their time with us, but we never defer to them for answers. We always like stay on afterwards and have a conversation about how what they shared felt for us. Um, what else do we do? Um, the integration circles are open format however it we do moderate them with a therapist or danny antman or kate and i or whatever but it's a health we're, it's we're, a health we're space really careful to make sure that there's not that one voice that drowns out others that people aren't espousing you know advice you know it's only about personal experience and that's the key because that's where people say oh same me here. too. And, and <laughs> me too. Like, everybody's muted and they're all like, uh, me, yeah. yeah, raising their hands. So that's the power. Yeah, that's the special sauce. And that is when lightning strikes community.com. So when lightning strikes film to get on our newsletter to watch the trailer and to just stay up to date. But if people want more support, they can go to when lightning strikes community.com. And that's where we're at. Great. Thank you so much. So the, the links to uh, the two websites that Kate's mentioned will be in the description. I encourage awesome. you all to to go check it out, be in touch with, with the community, stay on, stay up to date with, with the film. And one thing that I, I didn't mention yet was that as far as I've seen, there hasn't been a documentary or film about Kundalini Awakening. It is the most fascinating topic ever. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I know I might be a little biased, but I mean, if you really think about it, you know, we've got this crazy energetic transformation that's happening within people all around yeah. the world. How, how hasn't there been a documentary? Um, <laughs> well, you know, here we have the visionaries bringing that forward for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that will coincide with uh, the accelerated awakening that's taking place around the world. Like you've mentioned, so many more and more people are having this experience. And, and then, so we can see the film will come out at the right time mm. and, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I've hope, I hope that I've got some, some people excited about that as well. Mm. I, I know that um, the community is growing so much value there. I think you also mentioned that there was um, some things you were working on uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, like a modules, like uh, five or six parts. Yeah. Um, That's right. Yeah, we just recorded a course. Um, it took a year to make, but I, I recorded a course with Danny Antman on it's called Making Sense of Spiritual Awakening, how to navigate the roller coaster ride of your awakening so you can integrate and thrive. That just consists of like the most helpful things that we've we found. She as her in her 30 years experience as a somatic experiencing practitioner and a person who's had her own her own kundalini awakening and, and an energy healer. Um and um, me as someone who's just been through the experience. So we, we called this together. There's like information mm. on the nervous system. There's information on the subtle body just to give people like, you know, mm. some tools to work with and an understanding of what's actually happening. So, so critical to know what's happening. <laughs> and she's also the author of Wired for God, Wired for God, Adventures of a Jewish Yogi. Jesus, thank, you. thank you. You're welcome. And she's also followed one of the traditions uh, very closely um, from a um, Swamiji in India um, called PKYC Patanjali Kundalini Yoga Care, which we've um, stayed pretty close to. Um, Danny has a unique 
um, synthesis of many different modalities that has been helpful for me to un really understand what's going on, on for me on a somatic level and an energetic level and on a spiritual level. So, yeah, so that's coming soon and people can mm. find out about that um, by signing up for our newsletter. Great, great. <laughs> so just to reiterate, you can see that the, the community has some really well, well steeped uh, travelers of this path that are so willing to share openly about, about the journey and the different, uh, you know, things that they've, they've discovered. Mm -hmm. And I know that my favorite spiritual teacher, Matt Kahn is also, he, he's featured in the trailer. I I'm just sharing yeah. that just to plug his name, just to drop his name a little bit. Um, yeah. I drop his name all the time, but <laughs> many people of, of my podcast listen to him and, and, and love his work as well. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that they're like, yeah, he's in the documentary too. There's some great, um, some great, great figures out there that if you're able to connect with the community, you'll be able to benefit from their work. Um, and so definitely go go check out the community. Links in the description, like I mentioned. And I think this will be the end of, let's call it part one of our I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll have to we'll have to to get together another time to dive deeper yeah. into some some different topics because there's so much that much. that uh you know we didn't touch upon there's so many things you mentioned today that I would love to you know yeah to go off on tangents about and and see where that takes us but um, yeah we're totally available for that and it'll be fun to touch in like you know in a couple months and see where we've grown and where you've grown and you're a member of our community we're so excited that you are and you know to have you, you interacting with the members is a huge gift great so. great oh thank you it's 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 my pleasure thank you so much thank so you. with that said thank you all for listening to us today for watching we really appreciate your attention and you can stay tuned for the next part in the ongoing kundalini awakening series much love peace awesome peace take care everybody thank you brent <laughs> thank you brent thank you kay thank you gordon i really appreciate you both yeah. Thank you. Thank I you. I appreciate you too. Yeah.